Hey guys, Luke back with another video. This one's going to be all of the Nightfall only bosses. So we're looking for Death Birds, Death Right Birds, Knights Calvary, and all of the Bell Bearing Hunters. So I'm going to go to each location, kill them, and show you exactly what rewards you can get from killing those bosses. So I'm going to go ahead and start the clips. If you enjoy it, leave it a like and consider subscribing for more guide and PvP content to come. The first Death Bird I'm going to show you is over here at the Warmaster Shack in Limgrave. And all you have to do is when you get here, rest at the grace, make it nightfall, and then head over to this marker right here. And on top of that structure will be the death bird we're looking for. We're going to go ahead and kill him and see what he drops. And then once he dies, he should drop us the Blue Feather Branch Sword. The next death bird I'm going to show you is down here in the Weeping Peninsula at Castle Morn. And then once you're at this grace, you'll just rest at it, make it nightfall, and we're going to head up this way towards this structure here. And then somewhere up there, a the death bird's going to spawn. And I'll show you in detail once I get up that way. And then once you get up to like right about here is where the death bird spawns right here. So that's where you'll trigger it. You can see him there. But once he's slain, he should drop us the sacrificial axe. And next up we have the Death Bird in Liurnia of the Lakes. All you need to do is head over to the Scenic Isle Grace. And then we're going to make it nightfall and then head straight up this way northeast. And the Death Bird should spawn over that way. Once he's dead, he should drop us the Red Feathered Branch Sword. And the final death bird I'm going to show you is up at the Capital Outskirts here at the Hermit Merchant Shack. And all I'm going to do is make it nightfall, head up east towards the Erd Tree up that way. And the death bird should spawn. This one's going to be a little bit harder than the other ones because it's more late game than the other ones we were fighting. And we got these guys after us as well, so... And once he's dead, he should drop the Twin Bird Kite Shield. And the first Death Rite Bird I'm going to show you is down here in Kalid at the Southern Aeonia Swamp Bank. And once you're here, you're just going to head this way 
straight east. You can see the death bird in the distance there. We're going to go ahead and fight him and kill him and see what he drops us. There we go. And he should should drop us death's poker if I remember. And the next death right bird we're going to fight is over here in Lyurnia of the Lakes at the Gate Town North Grace. And it's not too far off, we just need to head down a little bit this way and then he will spawn. Where is he at? There he is. And I don't remember what he drops, but I think it's a spell. Yep, Ancient Death Rancor. And the next Deathrite bird I'm going to show you is up here in the mountaintops of the Giants. And you can head from the Snow Valley Ruins Overlook, the Freezing Lake Grace, or the Castle Soul Main Gate Grace. And we're going to head up this way. And then over here somewhere, the death right bird will spawn. This death right bird is going to be considerably harder than the previous two because it's a little more late game. Should spawn right over here. Yep. And once he's dead, he should drop us the death ritual poker. Or spear. And the hardest and final death bird I'm going to show you is up here in the consecrated snowfield area. And as a fair warning, before we head up to the Deathbird, you should go up towards the Apostate Dialect, and there will be a walking mausoleum that's going to fire magical projectiles. You'll need to get that to sit down to stop firing the magical projectiles by hitting the little skull crystal things on its feet. And then once you have that done, you can head up the river here, and right here is where you'll fight the final Deathbird. And we're going to go ahead and head over that way and kill him and see what he drops. Once we get about right over here, he should spawn behind us. And once he's dead, he should drop Explosive Ghost Flame. The first Knight's Cavalry I'm going to show you is down here on the Weeping Peninsula at the Castle Morn Rampart Grace. You can go ahead and just make it nightfall and then head over to the Knight's Cavalry right here. And you just pass up and down the road so you pretty much can't miss them. And once he's dead... He will drop the Ash of War Brigade Shield, Barricade Shield, and the Knight Rider Flail. The next Knight's Cavalry I'm going to show you is over here at the Og Hill Lake North Grace in Limgrave. And then once you're here, you're just going to make your way down towards the bridge, and he's going to be pathing along this road here. So we're going to go ahead and head over this way and kill him.
And you can see him over there. And then once he's dead, he'll drop you the Ash of War Repeating Thrust. The next Knight's Cavalry I'm going to show you is over here at the Gate Town Bridge Grace, and this is in Lyernia of the Lakes towards the southern part of the region. And then just along this road will be the path it takes, and we can go ahead and head down it. And you can see him right there. We're going to go ahead and kill him. Once he's dead, he should drop the Ash of War Ice Spear. The next Knight's Calvary I'm going to show you is also in Lyernia of the Lakes here up at the Bellum Church. And then once you're here, we're just going to follow this road down this way, and we will eventually find the Knight's Calvary roaming along that road. And you can see him right there. We're going to go ahead and kill him. And once he's dead, he should drop you the Ash of War Giant Hunt and the Knight Rider Glaive. The next Knight's Cavalry I'm going to show you is down here in the southern part of Kalid, here at the southern Aeonia Swamp Bank. You can also just come from this side and head along the road here, but he's just going to be pathing along this road. So make sure it's nightfall and then head down that way. And you can see him right there. As a quick tip, you can sort of lead him over to where Ixus is, the big rot dragon, and the get him to do the rot breath at you, and it will hit the Knight Rider, so... If you are unable to defeat him on your own, that's a little way you can do it. And once he's dead, he should go ahead and drop you the Ash of War Poison Moth Blight. The next Knight's Calvary I'm going to show you is also in Kalid, and it's towards the north at Lean's Rise. And then once you're here along the bridge, there will be a Knight Rider. And we can go ahead and kill him. This one is going to be pretty hard compared to the other ones we fought because the northern part of Kalid is meant as a sort of late game zone. So everything's got a, a large amount of health and does a lot of damage. So be careful when you come up through here. And once he's dead... I believe he drops Bloodhound Step. Yep, the Ash of War Bloodhound Step. The next Knight's Calvary I'm going to show you is up in the Altus Plateau region. And all you need to do is head to the Altus Highway Junction Grace here. And then roaming along this road will be the Knight's Calvary, and you can sort of see him behind that tree. Once he's dead, he should drop you the Ash of War Shared Order. The next Knight's Calvary I'm going to show you is up here in the Forbidden Lands. And this is right before you head up to the mountaintops of the Giants. But you're just going to make your way along this path and eventually you'll come across the Knight's Calvary along the way. Just make sure not to fall off. And there he is. I found him like right about here. Seems 
be immune to damage on the sun of this mount there. But once he's dead, he should drop you the Ashavor Phantom Slash. And the final Knight's Calvary is up here in the Inner Consecrated Snowfield. Up north. And then right over here, roaming around this way, is going to be a carriage with two giants. And then two Knight Riders nearby. You don't have to fight both of them at the same time. You can just pull one and then kill him, and then pull the other and kill him. But you do need to kill both if you want to get the rewards for killing him. And then once they're dead, they should drop the Knight's Calvary set, and I think it's a really cool set to have. And they also drop an Ancient Dragon Smithing Stone as well. The first of the Bell Bearing Hunters is going to be at the Warmaster Shack, and this is in Limgrave. But once you're here, all you have to do is enter this doorway, and that will trigger the spawn for the boss. So I'm going to go ahead and buff up. There he is. He should die to that. And then once you kill him, he should drop the Bone Peddler's Bell Bearing. And I'll go ahead and put something on the screen so you guys can see what exactly that Bell Bearing gives you. The next Bell Bearing Hunter I'm going to show you is up at the Church of Vows in Liernia of the Lakes. And once you're here, you can head inside. If the turtle is here and not the bell-bearing hunter, all you have to do is talk to the turtle and exhaust all of his dialogue. You will. Lord Radigan came to be soon with, however, Radigan taking the mystery as to why, and moreover. You wish he is the great, sadly, and then. You know a faint when he glimpses and as such. Do you then I would like to concern Radigan repented his order this miracle and so to restore. Hey. My miracle and this time you, I hope. Now that I've done all of his dialogue, we can head to another grace and then travel back to the Church of Vows. And if it's nightfall, the Bell Bearing Hunter should spawn. And I don't see the turtle in there, so we should just assume the Bell Bearing Hunter is going to attack us. Once he's dead, he'll drop the Meat Peddler's Bell Bearing, and I'll go ahead and put something on screen so you can see exactly what you get from that. And the next Bell Bearing Hunter I'm going to show you is up here in the Altus Plateau at the Hermit Merchant Shack. And then once you get here, all you need to do is head towards the shack. He's going to go ahead and spawn right there. So I'm going to go ahead and pre-fire some attacks at him. And then once he's dead, he'll drop you the Medicine Peddler's Bell Bearing. And I'll go ahead and put something on the screen so you guys can see exactly what that drops. And the final Bell Bearing Hunter I'm going to show you is up in Northern Kalid at the Isolated Merchant Shack. And this is the hardest of the Bell Bearing Hunters by far. So be ready when you come. The merchant, if he doesn't disappear and he's still there when you go to Nightfall, just go ahead and talk to him and then rest at the Grace again and he should disappear for you. But like I mentioned, this is the hardest of the Bell Bearing Hunters, so I recommend cheesing him. But if you think you can handle him, go ahead and fight him. But you have to go out here and he'll spawn there. And then I'm going to go ahead and get up on top of this building and just drag and breath him to death. And once he's dead, he'll drop the Gravity Stone Peddler's Bell Bearing. And I'll go ahead and put something on screen to show what that gives you. And that brings me to the end of this video. If you found it helpful, leave me a like and consider subscribing for more guide and PvP content to come.